Hi and welcome back to my channel and uh, we've got this problem here and that is all about finding the radius of this circle where the circle is on the top of a square and it's got this line going from the bottom right hand corner of the square and coming up and making a tangent to that circle there and I want to work out what the radius is. Now I want to start off this video by saying you know uh, you might be aware I'm uploading this a little bit later than normal that's basically because my computer decided to not start found that out you know a few days back but by the time I found that out my car was in the garage and then I couldn't go and fix it then I took it to fix it today and then I just got back and yeah it's been a bit of a nightmare trying to sort it all out but we're here and I'm going through a video and we're going through a maths problem now so hopefully you haven't missed this um, and like I say sorry that it was a little bit later than it usually is right now without further ado I'm going to get stuck in to working out the radius of this circle now there probably are, like with every problem, a few different ways you can do this. So if you found another way and need to wait, please share it in the comments. Now, the first thing I noticed about this is that the circle um, is in the middle of the side length of that, the top side of the square. And, and the reason I know that is because it's a square. So uh, side length of that square is eight. And from the bottom of the radius to the top left of that square is four, which is half of eight. So it's got to be in the middle. Now, using that, uh, what I also wanted to do, and what you should always do with circles, put the radius on. Um, and I want to get to this bit here, which is the tangent line. Now, I, like I was saying there before, I can only do that really, uh, or I thought only really thought of that because the circle is in the centre of that square. And so then we end up with some symmetry. We end up with some isosceles triangles because those lengths must be the same because the circle um, is in the middle, like we said, of that square. Now, you might also notice the one that I've put down here, um, and that is because we've got two tangents to the circle, and basically, if tangents intersect, uh, two tangents to a circle intersect, the length of those tangents from the circle to where they intersect has to be the same. So because um, from the bottom of that original radius was already marked on as one, that's the length of the tangent. The other tangent must also have a length of one. Intersecting tangents are equal in length, essentially. And that's one of the circle theorems, which you may know. All right, so we've got that. And like I said, we've got some symmetry. So I can now put on some side lengths here of one. And I can also draw the radius. And there, there is some symmetry there. We know that because, like I said, a couple of times the circle is in the center of this square on the top. Right, now the next thing is looking at these two triangles. And if anybody, well, the people that watch the channel regularly, you probably know one of my favourite methods for problem solving is similar shapes. It comes up all over the place in geometry. So these angles that I've marked on, the coloured ones, are the same. Now, the green ones are the same because they're vertically opposite angles and they're equal. And then the purple ones are the same because they're alternate angles in parallel lines, top and the bottom of the square are parallel. And likewise for the orange angles. And so we've then ended up with two similar triangles because all the angles are equal. So let's draw those out to make it a bit easier to see. So we've got one with a base of eight because that's the width of the square. Uh, that's the large one, quite clearly. And then the smaller one, which I kind of flipped around, that has got a base of two because we've got the one and the one there because of the symmetry. Right, now the scale factor for those triangles is four. Now, what I'm thinking while I'm doing this is, can I work out the heights of one of these triangles? Uh, because I've got a scale factor now, and I know that in total, the heights, when you add the two heights together, must be eight. Now, if I know the scale factor is four times by four, um, what I can do is I can simplify that into a ratio of four to one, if we're going from big to small. Now, what I then need to do is split the full height of the square, or the heights of both my triangles into this ratio of four to one. Now, the full height of the square is eight, or the heights of both triangles on top of each other is eight. So I'm gonna split that into five parts. Splitting eight into five parts, I get 1.6. So four lots of 1.6 is going to be 6.4, and the one part is obviously 1.6. So we get the, the heights of those triangles there. So the height of the bigger one, like we said, is 6.4, and the height of the smaller one is 1.6. Now, to make this easier to see, I'm going to tidy this all up. 
um, and I'm just going to make some space and put the 1.6 on the diagram. I could put the 6.4 on as well, but the 1.6 is actually all we need for the next bit. Now what I might do at some point is I might zoom this in because there's the 1.6, the height of that triangle, just to make it a bit easier to see. Now what the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a right angle onto that. So again, I'll zoom that in. So there's the right angle. Now from there, I'm going to do Pythagoras because I've got a 1, I've got 1.6 and I can work this side out, uh, which goes from that white circle to where they intersect, uh, those two chords that I've drawn. Essentially, uh, that small right angle triangle you can see there. Now the reason I'm going to do that is because we've also got a larger right angle triangle where the, the radius is R and then we've got... Um, the hypotenuse, which you know, what, I'll get to this bit in a second, but we've got a hypotenuse of r plus 1.6, and then we've got 1 plus this other side, which we're going to work out. Now, if that sounded a bit confusing, let's go through it and it should make sense. So, I'm working out this side here that's 1 squared plus 1.6 squared, and you square root it. So, that gives us an answer of root 89 over 5. Keep it in exact format so that we can use it properly in a second and get an exact answer. We don't want to end up with a rounding error. Okay, so using Pythagoras now over with one half of this diamond, essentially, um, that I've got at the top with my circle and my small triangle, I've got R squared plus, and then I've got the 1 plus what I've just worked out, root 18 over 5, all squared is equal to R plus 1.6 all squared. Now, you might not be able to see that too well, but hopefully you've, you've got the volume up and you can hear what I'm saying. Um, now... Once you've got that, obviously you, you can do it um, using your calculator, but it's always best if you can to get things in an exact format. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna expand the right-hand side brackets first because that's quite easy. I'm gonna get R squared plus 1.6, 1.6 R, so that's 3.2 R, and then 1.6 squared is 2.56. Now I've also simplified a little bit the bracket on the left-hand side. I've put the 1 inside the fraction, so 1 is 5 over 5, so we get 5 plus root 89 over 5. Now, there's R squared on both sides of this equation, so I'm going to cancel those out. And then I'm going to expand this bracket, 5 plus root 89 over 5. And I'm going to do it um, without the calculator, so I'm going to do it, you know, mentally. Not mentally, but I'm going to do it with a written method, essentially. I'm going to do it, you know in my head and write down what it would be properly without using the calculator because the calculator won't give you the exact answer so sometimes you've got to be careful with that just because it doesn't give you the exact answer doesn't mean there isn't one so expanding those brackets i get 5 squared which is 25 and root 89 squared which is 89 add them together you get 114 and then you've got 5 times root 89 5 times root 89 so 10 root 89 all over 25 okay and I'm going to take away 2.56 from both sides here. And actually, 2.56 times by 25 is quite a nice number. So it's 64. So that if I take that away from the left-hand side fraction, I'm taking away 64 over 25. So what I really need to do is 114 take away 64, which leaves me with 50 plus 10 root 89 over 25 is 3.2 R. So it's starting to look a little bit nicer. And then I'm going to simplify that fraction. So that is 10 plus 2 root 89 over 5 is 3.2 R. I'm going to divide them by 3.2 on both sides. And I'm going to get an exact answer of 5 plus root 89 over 8 is equal to R. And that's the radius. Now, like I said earlier, it's always best to leave it in an exact format. But if you can't do that or... Uh, you might want it to decimal places, just type in your calculator, press S to D, and we get an answer of 1.80 to two decimal places. Let's put a box around it. So that's pretty neat, and I, I personally, obviously, quite like my solution, because it uses similar shapes, and I always think they're quite cool, seeing where and how they come up. Either are there any other methods? Couldn't get my words out. Have you found a different method? I think most will probably use Pythagoras, but can you come up with something quite creative? If you can, put it down in the comments below, and I, you know, I always really enjoy reading everyone's thoughts and everyone's uh, methods. Okay, now one more thing, just like I say, um, sorry that it was a little bit late uploading the video, but I hope you enjoyed that, um, and if you can't tell as well, I've got a bit of a, a sore throat um, from the football last night. 
Ah, oh, never mind. We'll win next time. We'll win next time. What is it? 2020, 2026. Come on, England. Come on, England. 2026. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video next week. Till then, bye-bye.